JSON Web Tokens. What is a JSON Web Token? JSON Web Tokens are an open standard that defines a compact and self-contained way for securely transmitting information between parties as JSON. So what does compact mean? Compact means that it uses up less bandwidth over the network compared to, say, a format XML. Self-contained refers to the fact that this can be a stateless protocol. All the information with respect to unpacking the JSON Web Token is contained within the token itself. So you don't need to keep any specific data about the state. So JSON Web Tokens can either be encrypted and they can also be signed. So signed using a secret, for example, via an HMAC algorithm, or it can be signed using a public-private key pair, such as RSA. We'll be talking about these very shortly. So what do JSON Web Tokens actually accomplish? JSON Web Tokens allow for signing the token, ensuring that the content hasn't been tampered with, and the authority source is who it is intended to be. If Alice needs to send a message to Bob, Bob will know that both Alice sent the message and the message has been changed. So this way we can securely send information between Alice and Bob, and Bob knows for certain that nobody in the intermediaries is tempered with or a man in the middle attack has occurred. So a little bit of a review of cryptography. I mentioned HMAC and so on, so what are they? First, there is the notion of asymmetric um, signing algorithms. So these leverage public-private keys using RSA SHA-256 in the case of JWT. The authentication source can sign using the private keys, and the public keys can be used for verifying, so anyone can have access to the public keys. But the private keys and the public keys are linked. For symmetric, they use a secret key using HMAC SHA-256, so both the client and authentication source need to agree with the secret key. This can clearly become a problem for larger sites or systems because now you need to have consensus on what that secret key is and modifying it would need to be an atomic operation. So for public key encryption, which is the asymmetric version, the public key can be distributed to everyone, but the public key and the private key are mathematically linked. So only so many people can either encrypt or decrypt in the case of GWT, which is flipped using the private key. Contrast, for HMAC SHA-256, the secret key can be shared between both and then the secret key can be used to both encrypt and also decrypt the message. The structure of JWT is fairly simple. The first part is the header, the second part is the payload, and the third part is the signature. And it will look something like this, where those three components are joined together by dots, which are with each individual section being base64 URL encoded. Let's go through each part. Part number one is the header where typically there is two parts to this. The first part is the type of the token, which is JSON Web Token, JWT. The second part is the hashing algorithm, which is either HS256 for HMAC SHA-256 or RS-256 for the RSA algorithm. And then afterwards, this JSON string is base64 URL encoded. For the payload, here we contain parts about the claims. The claims are statements about an entity, typically the user or additional metadata. We have three types here. We have reserved claims, which are predefined claims. Then we have the public claims, which are defined at will. But then you should be careful to not create any clashes. So you can verify this through our JSON Web Token Registry. And then the private claims are simply claims created at will between the two parties. So I've added some examples on the right hand side with some standard reserved claims, such as issuer, expiration date, and subject. Last part is the signature. So now, this is the part where we actually incorporate the component of ensuring that the data has been tampered with or it's from the original author. Here we can generate the signature by taking and concatenating the header along with the payload, and then we can apply our secret for the HMAC algorithm or private key for RSA to actually sign the algorithm. And this is the part where we're actually going to successfully create the final JWG. So what is the control flow for authentication using JSON Web Token? The user first successfully logs in using their credentials. Afterwards, a JSON Web Token will be returned from the server. If the user now wants to access the protected route, they simply use the authorization header. So this is a stateless protocol because the user state is never maintained in the server. Instead, everything is self-contained in the JSON Web Token. So simply as part of the HTTP header, you put authorization, bear, and then the token. Thank you all for watching and subscribe for new videos every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern. See you all next week.